This is African American History is American History. New World Coming was a radio show that aired in the 1940s and was created by Roy Otley. The show was based on Otley's book of the same name and was aimed to highlight political and racial issues through real life experiences of African Americans. The experiences included Instances of black U.S. soldiers being denied service at restaurants and movie theaters while on leave. Discrimination in the workplace. Unequal pay and opportunities. And other civil rights issues. It was pretty bold stuff for the time period. American-born dancer, singer, and actress Josephine Baker moved to Paris in the 1920s to escape the racism she encountered here in the States. She became a huge star in France and was able to put that fame to good use as a spy when war erupted across Europe. Fame was her cover. During World War II, Josephine Baker regularly attended parties at embassies and consulates in occupied France, where she would flirt with high-ranking Nazi officials. Because of her celebrity, the German men would swoon over her and sometimes begin to divulge military secrets after being plied with alcohol. Baker would later jot down notes on her sheet music. She hid the notes in her underwear so they could be carried past checkpoints and delivered to the French resistance. The term redlining comes from government ownership programs that were created as part of the 1930s era New Deal. To help keep people in their homes, the federal government established the Home Owners Loan Corporation, or HOLC. Now its goal was to finance mortgages with better terms, like lower interest rates and longer repayment periods to help people make payments and avoid foreclosure in the wake of the Depression. However, President Roosevelt's New Deal did little to advance the cause of racial equality in America with regard to housing. To determine what loans they would guarantee, HOLC sent people to appraise neighborhoods and vet homeowners. They documented the types of housing in neighborhoods along with information about the people who live there, using color-coded maps ranking the loan worthiness of neighborhoods in more than 200 cities and towns across the United States. They also cataloged, quote, detrimental influences, end quote, with racist descriptions like, quote, infiltration of Negroes, end quote, and, quote, mixed races, end quote characteristics that lowered a neighborhood's value. Neighborhoods were ranked from least risky to most risky, or from A through D. The federal government deemed D areas as places where property values were most likely to go down, and those areas were marked in red, a sign that these neighborhoods were not worthy of inclusion in home ownership and lending programs. Now, I'm sure it won't surprise you that most of the D areas were neighborhoods where black residents lived. And so, black homeowners were unable to get home loans that were backed by government insurance programs. That's redlining, drawing boundaries around neighborhoods based on residents' race and depriving them of resources and opportunities, effectively racializing poverty in cities across the U.S. The very definition of structural racism, where racism is built into the rules of society. Redlining worsened poverty and segregation in cities all across the United States and left a devastating legacy of income, health, and racial disparities. This has been African American History is American History.